I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, this is Ripper here, but you guys are doing fantastic today. Got a fun video with the Johnson again, this time with uh, just uh, taking a look at it and especially how powerful it is in uh, rank today. But as always, before we begin, like, subscribe, all button below if you want to support the channel. Check out the buttons below, like, subscribe, help the algorithm out. And um, thank you for helping us build a great community, learn something from it, and making good friends and having a blast at the same time. So let's get to it. Johnston, is this thing broken OP, uh, especially in the ranked tier 9 kind of level? Um, we'll take a look at it and analyze it, and also tips and techniques on how to be a good destroyer player. Notice I, I'm not always trying to cap immediately right off the bat in the sense of I'm going to sit there and smoke and, you know, try to cap the damn thing. No, I just want to literally loiter around the edges, pop in, pop out, kind of test the waters. You know, anybody that, uh, especially with only 20,000 HP people, and we'll use that as a, a point uh, later on to determine if the ship is powerful or not. With only 20,000 HP, you're not really here susceptible to taking a massive amounts of damage, and you're not a tanker. You know, you're not a brawler in the sense. So Johnson really, in my personal opinion, is kind of, again, just like a Fletcher's um, kind of quick, uh, fast attack destroyer where you're going in, you're testing the waters, you're scouting, and you're just kind of being that forward observer to determine whether or not you really want to take the fight to the enemy, you want to torp, you want to spot, you want to engage in a, a, a destroyer battle. So we really... It's really that's more in and out kind of tactic, huh? giggity. But anyways, uh, taking a look right off the bat. Look, we already have a black committing a little bit too far, for my personal opinion. Um, even though we have smoke and radar, if the black is also being radared, I mean, if you're stuck in that position, you have no egress. You're kind of um, SOL, you know. So like, like, like right now, so black right now is in a the, that current USS black is in a s tough situation because you have an island that prevents you from egressing going to the south or west. You have a black that's also engaging on the other side, and then you have me engaging from the southeast of uh, his position. So, and now I'm smoking up. He already uses radar, and now he's in a predicament. Now either he pushes in uh, to Bravo, or, or he has to take the long way to egress. So. That's maybe, like I said, that's a bad position for him. Now he's out of his smoke being perma spotted now. And they have Alaska also radaring him. So right now we're going to just use our a sap right here. We had HE at the beginning. I like HE as well. And the Fletchers are really powerful. Even on the Johnson, the HE is still powerful with the burst fire. And it's for more of the angle. But now that he's not angle full broadside, just look at the power of what the sap can do right here. Look, it just melts. Uh, it, it's just not even fair. So yeah, he gets taken off. We eliminate one of their destroyers. Again, my priority is destroyers first, radar cruisers second, and then battleships last. Again, that, that order has uh, helped me survive a lot of engagements because you take out the eyes and ears of the uh, enemy team, their destroyers, they, they're pretty much done. They have nothing to do. Ooh, taking a torpedo and boom, devastating strike on the buffalo. And like I said, power of the torpedoes of the Fletcher Johnson kind of era, really just even the black, the black. And they all have this torpedo that can really just do some damage. They're just American, you know, the tier nine Fletcher tor torpedoes, not like gearing style, but they do go out and reach and touch somebody. Uh, the, the ones on the Johnson reach out to 13.5 as opposed to 10 and a half on the Fletcher. And the black goes a little bit further in that, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't have the numbers up in front of me. But... Again, the very, very powerful the torpedoes. The uh, USS Black has uh, more of the slower landmines, sea mines, um, while the Fletcher still has these 65 to 69 knot uh, kind of torpedoes if you build for them. Here we go. Here's another example. Minigumo kind of being a little bit too aggressive right here, uh, thinking his concealment will help him, but unfortunately uh, being spotted by me well within his range. And then here we go. You get the power of the sap right here, full broadside. And at this point, you should have just turned down and ran away because and angled against the sap. But unfortunately, he turns back in. I'd say capitalize on this moment right here and just look at the power of what the sap can do. And boom. Splash two. He goes down right there. And that is the power of the sap burst fire, ladies and gentlemen, right there. Um, it just uh, wrecks havoc right here. A good technique right here, as you know, Minigum is a torpedo boat. Turn into the target, slam on the brakes, and because he could have launched torpedoes, wait about five to ten seconds, and then go about your way. Again, that is just a mitigating technique to avoid torpedoes that most torpedo players usually do right before they die. 
So what have we done right there? We went in, we just contested slowly, bravo, let the enemy team make mistakes, run around with their head cut off, figure it, just get randomly all confused and disoriented, not communicating. I know, in, especially in rank, not money, people are communicating. Uh, so I've capitalized on that confusion. You go in, you test the waters, you pop in, pop out, and then you analyze situations and see which is the, the, again, priority, destroyers, cruisers, and then battleships. And then you kind of analyze, hey, how's that going? So Johnson does a very, very good job of that because look at that. Concealment's at 5.8. So you, you, are, you are fairly, anything below 6, I say, is a fairly good uh, spotting destroyer. You have the sap shells, uh, which are very, very devastating in today's meta. And then you got the burst fire, which even adds more and more to that again the dpm is not like excessive or anything it's still balanced uh, for what it is but again with the burst fire you get that first look first kill you just run up to somebody and punch them in the face and it takes a lot of health off of them right off the bat you wait you're about six and a half to seven and a half seconds if you build for it and then you fire another uh full salvo into that ship and it, it really is devastating it just getting a lot more shells in in a concise manner and that helps with aiming and i think that is the gimmick really that helps uh more shots on target as opposed to waiting for a three second reload time over and over again that gives time for the ship to maneuver and everything. With the burst fire, there's no time to maneuver. As soon as you're broadside, boom, you're absorbing the full broadside impact of it. So it's just more shells in a concise point in a small, concise time. That's pretty much the gimmick. And here's the power of the torpedoes. And boom, look at that. Splash three. That, again, uh, torpedoes are not the primary focus of the Johnston. It, they have a significantly long reload time. But... Uh, when they do pow the hit, they hit with a, a fury. And uh, like I said, they reach out to 13 and a half, which is great. These things are still detectable, 1.4 detection. They're still detectable, but if you're not paying attention, these things can sneak up on you and kill you, especially at 13 and a half. You didn't think these torpedoes would reach out and touch you, but they do. And then, of course, you got the natural uh, Fletcher smoke and the engine boost. I've actually built the engine boost, uh, increased it in the armory. The uh, extra engine boost gives me about, you know, uh, what, 150 seconds-ish plus, so about more than two minutes. So look at the speed on the, the Johnson, 42 and a half plus, a little bit faster than the Fletcher and, and the Black. So I do like uh, Johnson's speed, and this thing is a literally a DD hunter. I, and I've actually had to see that a lot, and you're going to see it. We'll speed up the video. You're actually going to see me going hunting de destroyers, especially in these late games where, it, you know, having RPF, like I said, look at the RPF indicator. This is crucial, a crucial skill to have, and I definitely recommend, you know, using that because it is a very, very powerful skill. It, it, it really helps you in the late game in this situation here. Notice that the smoke has popped up right now, and I'm using that to, and and the, in conjunction with the RPF indicator, say, hey, I'm going to use a smoke screen, hide my movement. He doesn't know where I'm at. I know where he's at. So I'm going to go in the spot where I know he's most vulnerable. And there it is. Switching to HE because I want most of the shells to contact and that disregard uh, angling. And boom, splash four. He goes down right there. And that is the kill right there. Four kills in a ranked game um, as a destroyer player. You got to think of that for a second now. With ship, battleships, cruisers, and everything more powerful than you, I've only got 20,000 HP. But if you're letting a destroyer run amok on your team of four, uh, four kills, man, uh, your team needs to work on some stuff because you cannot let a destroyer run around and go around and kill half your team. And that's what I think the problem is in World of Warships today. Not in the sense of the ships, but I do think it's because of the player base just doesn't understand. And I'm just why I'm trying to do these videos to show you, hey, look, from a perspective of a destroyer player, the destroyer player is the leader, I honestly think so. Because you're going out there, you're taking the fight first. You're going out first, you're using your speed, you're spotting, you're, you're capping, you're calling the shots, you're seeing where the enemy's at. You're doing almost everything while everybody else is sitting in the back trying to just do the best shot they can. Like, oh, I'm a battleship, I can shoot long range and see if I can hit somebody. That, that's not leader. That is just, you know, you being a, a, a gun platform, okay? And, and that's great. That means you're a supportive role. You're a supportive player. And that's my personal opinion. Uh, because as a battleship, you're just focused on trying to hit somebody and maneuver your ship to hit somebody. That's it. As a short player, you're doing everything. You're capping, you're spotting, you're torping, you're, you're hunting DDs, you're torpedoing, you're, you're trying to figure out where's the best position. You're a quick reaction force. You have to literally reposition yourself to go where the enemy's at because you're not spotted. You're looking for uh, gaps in the holes and you're looking for opportunities to fight and take the fight to the enemy. So, And you can see more of a macro's perspective where you're zoomed out and looking at a bird's eye view of battlefield and kind of go, Going, okay, where do they need to put me? And that makes a good destroyer player. And that is what I'm saying is why if you're letting a destroyer player run amok on the, your enemy, your team, then you got a problem. You got to talk about it. And again, that's why I think the destroyer player is the most impactful um, player in the game. It's got the, the most utility and utility and everything like that and so forth. Um, but again, that's my that's my opinion. I'm just a DD main. That's how I look at it. And uh, your thoughts. I, I'd love to hear people's different perspectives and opinions about it. What do you think of the Johnson? Is it broken? Is it OP? To sum it up, 
<clears throat> I don't think there's any really broken ship, honestly, because anything can be destroyed. You know, with enough shells on target, you can blow up something. Even the Marceau, I thought, is OP. Yeah, it can be powerful DPM, but you in, in clan battles has proven it. If you have a, a lot of people that can know how to aim, know how to focus fire, anything can be destroyed. So there's no such thing, in my personal opinion, as a broken OP ship. Now, it can approach that. I can say Marceau is approaching broken OP because it's got so much firepower and, and, and futility and, and, and uh, you know, damage and maneuverability and resistance. Absolutely. But with Johnston, I, does that fit that same category? I don't think, I don't really think it does. It's powerful. I wouldn't say it's broken OP with the 20,000 HP pool, no heals. Um, it's pretty much any other destroyer. You shoot enough shells at it, it kind of goes to the bottom of the ocean. So that's my thought. I, I do enjoy the Johnson. I, uh, I said, if you got the money for it, I recommend it. If you don't have the money for it, I don't recommend it. But again, it is still a fun ship to play and it's really uh, awesome to use. Again, look at that four kills right there. And, uh, very, very powerful destroyer. I have to say it's fun, um, in my personal opinion. Again, uh, I like, I'm starting to play more of the Fletcher line, the USS Black. I mean, I've been playing all those destroyers, the Tier 9 side. It is fun at Tier 9. At Tier 11, you know, super ship range, this thing might struggle a little bit, but it doesn't mean that it isn't still impactful and still fun. Uh, for first in the team right there, four kills, absolutely. Um, a lot of firepower, a lot of damage. This thing can really spit out and dish out power, especially at the Tier 8, Tier 9 level, Tier 10 maybe, a little bit, and then Tier 11, it may be a struggle but as always hope you enjoy the videos check out the other videos that i've had thank you guys for supporting the channel and if you have better ideas or even comments again i'm not the to say i know it all I, i'm always learning if you guys have something to add to the team and to the community absolutely this is why this is here it's a great forum to share ideas make good friends and learn something at the same time so i hope you guys are doing well i hope you guys had a great fourth of july salute to the military as well and uh, as always you guys see me out there say hi and we'll see you guys soon cheers